Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to my top five favorite houseplants. Right now anyway, because honestly, it changes every week. Honestly, that's the main reason why I haven't really done videos like this. I would love to do videos about my favorite houseplants. The only problem is it does kind of change pretty often. So I'm going to try it anyway, because I don't get to talk about a lot of these plants. To be honest, I don't get to talk about any of my plants in most of my videos. So I thought now would be a good time. So I think I'm just going to get straight into it, to be honest. I'm going to start with a plant that honestly, I'm a little bit obsessed with this. And I can honestly say out of all of the houseplants here that I have today, this is the houseplant that's just never changed. Like this has always been a favorite plant of mine to the point where I think I've got a few of them in the house. I think it could be one of maybe two plants that I actually have multiple of. I don't really know why I just started collecting them even though they're the same. It doesn't make any sense to me. The only thing I can really ascertain from that is I really love the plant that much. I think I've got four plants in the house, large and small, and I also have a million cuttings at the minute because I'm trying to propagate it because it just got a bit much. If you haven't already guessed, it is my Philodendron Florida Ghost. Now this has just been watered so it's dripping everywhere. It it's just gonna drip all over me, but I absolutely adore these plants. And obviously I adore these plants because of the leaves for a few reasons. One, they emerge, if you don't know what a Philodendron Florida Ghost is, the leaves emerge this beautiful white creamy color and then over time they fade to green. And it is just the most beautiful thing ever. I love the leaves when they're juvenile like they look now but I also love the leaves when they're more mature. Like I just love the journey that these leaves go on as the plant matures. I do have another Florida ghost, I'll show you in just a second, but this is the plant that I have that's the most white at the minute. So I really, really want to show you that. I'm gonna put it down though, because honestly I'm getting soaked right now. Let me show you the other one. So this here is a slightly larger Florida ghost. As I say, I do have four of them. I have one that's just down here behind me, and then I have one in, I think two rooms down in one of the bedrooms. And I'm just obsessed with it. Look, look at that, by the way. How amazing is this? You need to see this leaf because this is just amazeballs. That is just amazing if I've ever seen it. So this one's growing really, really well. Actually, it's got a really beautiful fat growth spike on it. Like I don't need four of these plants. I don't, I really don't. And I go on that I don't have, you know, space for all my plants and yet I still keep getting these. So it doesn't make any sense. A lot of people are obsessed with these plants and I get it. Like, I feel like I'm the ambassador for this plant. This is just one of my favorites. It could be my favorite philodendron ever. I would go as far as to say it's my favorite philodendron ever. One of my favorites, slightly obsessed. I don't need to own this many, but I do. And I'm gonna keep doing it. So philodendron, Florida ghost, one of my top five favorite houseplants at the minute. Although this one's pretty permanent, to be honest. Well, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's grab, I have a Monstera down here that I think I should grab. Now, this Monstera, I don't think people have seen this up close for a little while, so I thought it'd be really cool to show you guys today. And it doesn't get much press. I don't take photographs of it, I don't talk about it, but it is actually one of my favorites. So I'll pick it up now. It's got some interesting growth updates on it as well. So this, right here, is my Monstera Dubai, and let me just try and basically cover my face because my camera loves to focus on my face. It is absolutely amazing. I'd like to draw your attention to this really leggy growth right here. This is winter growth. If anybody that doesn't know where this like blue light is on this side of the screen, it's actually normally living next to my lamp in the corner. It does get light, it just doesn't get amazing light, but obviously with it being winter, we've got some winter growth. So I will probably trim this off because I prefer the tight, you know, shinglingness of these. But I'll probably just wait till it reaches the top before I cut it and then I'll just propagate it. As soon as I put it in this pot and I mounted it onto the wood, which I will get to in a minute, it decided it was just gonna propagate itself. So what it's done is, you probably can't see, I'll have to like push it right up to the camera, I think. But literally there's two on top of each other. And I do just tend to keep them like that because it's just the best way to keep them flat. But there's one growing in front of the other one. It just seems to be the back that's growing the most, the one, you know, behind this one. So the wood is just a varnished plank of wood that it's basically wedged into this pot right here. There is an inner pot inside. I don't know how well you can see that. And the plant has obviously been planted in it. And it's just been twined up to the wood like this. Now, don't get me wrong. That ain't necessarily the sexiest solution for this plant. But honestly, I don't really mind it. I like the fact that it is twined, it's a little bit more rustic and it goes with the wood a little bit better. But I don't think this plant can actually stick to it itself because the wood, like I wouldn't recommend this wood for it. 
So basically because this wood has been varnished and it's like super smooth and super beautiful piece of, I think it's like cherry wood or something or walnut. I don't actually know what wood it is, but because of this, the plant just can't seem to stick to it. So if you're going to mount your Dubaia on some sort of wood, don't go for something that's like super sexy, like lesson learned, because your plant's not really going to adhere to it. And that is honestly what I'm finding. Personally, I don't really mind too much. It has been happy growing this way for a while, so it's not upset or pissed off with me in any way. So I'm just probably gonna keep twining it because I don't actually mind how the twine looks. I know some people probably don't like it, but I don't mind it. I think it's pretty and it's really nice and compact that it just sits by my lamp. So it's 100% it's one of my favorites and it has been for quite a while. I just never talk about it and I never give it any press. I feel bad for it really, but it's definitely one of my favorites. Monstera Dubai. -a. There it is one last time before you guys probably don't see it in a little while. Oh, could you please just straighten yourself? Calm yourself, calm yourself. Right, let's bring it back to the philodendron because I have one down here that it is my favorite. This is a classic example of what I was talking about at the start of the video. This philodendron is my favorite, but it's my favorite philodendron right now, right? It's my favorite philodendron this month. And that is probably because of its recent variegation and its general genetics. So this plant that I'm about to show you, I do like the plant, like I've had one of these plants before, but it didn't have good genetics. What I mean by that is it wasn't that variegated. It wasn't a brilliant specimen um, of this type of plant. So although I liked it, I didn't love it. I never got to fully appreciate it. But then I found this one and this one is a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Now, anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about, but does follow my previous, you know, videos, my previous plant hauls. This one is a plant from the International Aroid Show that I went to last year. And this is my beautiful, ready for it, pink princess, my philodendron pink princess. She's got quite big. She's a little bit kind of gnarly. She needs repotted. I'm considering putting her on a pole, but I don't know. I think it's just because I've put other houseplants on poles and now I'm just obsessed with the idea of growing everything up a pole. I don't know. But this plant is so sexy to me right now, obviously because of this leaf, thus making it my favorite at the minute. I realize how ridiculously superficial that is, guys. I don't care. I'm not ashamed to admit it. At the minute, she is one of my favorites because she looks like this. She's a bit of a showstopper. Do you know what I mean? Like you walk into my office in my plant room and she's there, she's right there. You can't really not notice her. This leaf isn't quite as good. It's a little bit gnarly, but it's okay. The other leaves are pretty good. Not insane variegation, but pretty good variegation across. And obviously now we're at that magical coveted point that people quite honestly hope to get to with a pink princess. And that is when you start getting half and half. That is some sexy, sexy stuff. So right now she is my favorite. That may change, do you know what I mean? I don't know. But for now, she is my favorite. So this is the beautiful philodendron pink princess. Looking very pink indeed. Very, very pink indeed. Let's put pretty down. So let me just grab the next plant. This is a monstera and it is a variegated monstera. But you may notice, I do hope it picks up on camera. Well, it should do, the pot is white. The variegation on this monstera is yellow. Now, I love this plant for a couple of reasons. The main reason, okay, you won't maybe know this, but in my house, in here right now, I have an insane abundance of variegated monstera. I know, lucky me, but it's not, it's not actually all for me. It's actually for my shop. I'm just propagating some cuttings. So I have the monstera that's behind me that you should be able to see right there. That's my, you know, my big brute that I've always had. And then I have just tons of cuttings. I have two massive pots full of cuttings rooting in liquor. And then I have some glass vases that also have more cuttings in. So what I'm getting at here, <laughs> I'll get to the point. You know, I see so much of the white variegated Monstera in my home and to be honest, online as well. And I'm not sick of seeing it at all because variegated monstera is beautiful. It's never gonna stop being beautiful, whether it's rare or not, because it isn't, but it's never gonna stop being beautiful. But the yellow is something else because honestly, you can't really find yellow variegated monstera. Now, a little bit about this plant specifically, I bought it like this. I actually bought it in a Facebook auction. So it did look like this when I got it and it had this leaf here as well. And it had this leaf here as well. So the new leaf is actually this one in the middle here. 
and it took ages to grow a leaf. It really, really did. It had some aerial root when I got the cutting, but it's taken a long time to get to this point. If I turn this plant around though, you can actually see there's a little bit more variegation than maybe you would think. So I have high hopes for it. These are very sought after and they're very hard to get. If anybody knows of anybody that's selling uh, cuttings of yellow variegated Monstera, I'd love to get my hands on another one because I'd love a more mature one. So if you know anybody that's dishing them out, let me know in the comments because I'm very, very keen on finding them. But yeah, that's the main reason why this is actually my favorite at the minute. I'm obviously very keen to see this grow and see how the variegation develops on this because who knows what's gonna happen, right? So before I show you my last plant, I wanna let you know that technically there are six plants in this video just because I wanna show you another one of my plants that isn't my favorite, but I thought now is as good a time as anything to give you kind of like growth updates on it. So I will show you that after. But before I do that, I will show you one of my favorite houseplants. I just want to say this is in no order, by the way. I should, probably should have said that at the beginning, but this isn't in any order. I just have like a top five at the minute. So it's not like I love one of these more than the other. I kind of like them kind of about the same. That's kind of why I picked them. But without further ado, I will show you my other favorite philodendron. And that philodendron is this little dude. This is my gorgeous philodendron spiritus sancti. Now, before anybody gives me any shit in the comments about this not being real, trust me, we went through it last year. Yes, it is real. No, it's not atabapoensi. It's a real spiritus. And I want to show you how amazing the new growth is on my spiritus. Now, it's not perfect. Don't get me wrong. So this is all the new growth up front since I got the plant. I'll try and cover my face with it so you can see it properly. If you can see, it's not perfect growth. It's not on the standard that like, you know, this, this long leaf here is or anything like that, but they're getting there. I'm just kind of happy it's growing. Um, if you don't know anything about this, I got this last year, but it arrived in a bit of a stressed state. So it's been kind of recovering. This is obviously winter growth, but it's growth, right? So I'm really happy that it's even growing. I don't really care that it's winter growth. I'm just so happy to see this little guy growing. Anybody that's interested, he's planted up in my Aroid mix. I have done a video on it. If you search for it, you will find it. Um, really nice Aroid mix and he's been growing honestly really fast. When did I get this guy? Was it September? From September till now, given that, you know, we're in winter and it has not been great in here, I'm quite impressed with the result. That's kind of cool. That's like what? One, two, three, four, five leaves. It's doing pretty well, pretty, pretty well. Now I was thinking about this before this video and I've been a little bit frightened to put this plant on camera since I got it. I don't know if anybody's picked up on that. To be honest, I didn't think about it until today before I went to you know, grab it for this video and I kind of hesitated a little bit. And I think it's probably because of what went down last year. I didn't really want to put it on a video because I just feel like I'm just going to get you know, a ton of hates in the comments for even showing it on a video. But honestly, when you think about it, that's, you know, that's a little bit ridiculous. So I really want to show this plant today. It's been off camera for a very long time. It's been off camera basically since it went on camera. So I wanted to show you guys the growth updates on this and show you how well it is doing. He's doing great. I'll probably repot him maybe, I don't know, maybe late spring. We'll see how he does. He's obviously quite happy, so I'm not willing to screw around with him too much, but we'll see what happens. But here's one of my favorites at the moment. Not more favorite than a lot of my others. You know, I think I still prefer my Florida ghosts, funny enough, but he is still one of my favorites. I'm just pleased that you guys have finally got to see him now. So there he is. I'm sure he'll make more of an appearance in the future, but there he is, my Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. We'll pop him down. And before we go, I just want to show you growth updates on another plant because I know I get asked about it, you know, not a lot, but I do get asked about it. And I thought, well, it's just going to take a couple of minutes to update you. So I'll do it now. So the plant I'd like to update you on is a plant that I actually swapped for a Monstera Oblica runner node. And I got this plant as a cutting and basically it, long story, very short, because I know no one's probably going to care. It rotted on me twice. So I got the plant, it had no root and it was chopped very close to the node. I didn't know it was going to be chopped that close, but it was chopped super, super close to the node. I put it in water to try and root it and it started to rot. So I removed it from the water, I cut the rot, I thought I got it all, I hadn't, and it started rotting again. So by that point, I was so close to the node, I thought, okay, what on earth do I do? So it was a two leaf plant and basically one of the petioles had an extra node on it. So I kind of did the unthinkable and I just straight up removed the second leaf and that node and left myself with one leaf and one node. And it was terrifying. 
It was terrifying because the plant I'm talking about is a variegated Monstera ansonii, and I'm pleased to say it's doing much better, I've got to say. So this is it right now. Let me try and tip it up for you. Oh, I've just dropped something on my spiritus. There he is. He's got some very decent roots up front there. Like this round here is very, very strong and his variegation's pretty good too. Now, one thing I will note is on this leaf here, there is a little bit of browning down the center. This plant's been pretty much grown in lab conditions. Just gonna be honest with you. If you've seen my houseplant tour, then you might have noticed how this was grown. But I've been placing it in the biop, just in its pot to see if it likes it in there. And since I've placed it in the biop, it's got a little bit of brown down the center of the leaf. Now, I don't know at this point if that's the light in the biob because I have actually taped them over so then they're like 50% intensity or it's just the fact that the pot got too dry and I didn't get to water it because I thought that the humidity would be enough. But what has actually happened is since I've moved it out of its lab, you know, humidity conditions and into the biob, the drop in humidity has caused the plant to take up more water to accommodate for it, you know, in shock and it's got dry too quick. So I don't know if that browning on this leaf is because of the, you know, the lack of water, the underwatering or the lights. I'm more inclined to think at this point that is the lack of watering. So for now, it is living in the biob behind me in basically the pot. It's just sat in there just to see if it's okay. If it's okay, I'm gonna move it into the biob, you know, to have a more permanent home, because why not? If the oblique is fine in there, then this has to be fine in there. So I'm very, very pleased about this. It's actually not one of my favorites. And I think that's because this plant is still a great source of stress for me, whereas the spiritus actually isn't because honestly, they're really easy growers and there's nothing generally to worry about like this versus an obliqua versus a spiritus. The spiritus is definitely the easiest out of the three. I'm finding this harder to grow than the obliqua at the minute, probably because it's variegated and it grows slower, whereas the obliqua is, it's insanely fast. It's actually not my favorite at the minute. Surprise, surprise. And that concludes my top five favorite house plants of right now, I guess you could say. As I said before, I haven't done a video like this because my tastes change so fast. I think a lot of people would get annoyed with me if I did a video at one point of my, you know, top five favorite and then just change the next month. Because honestly, I get like that, you know, if a plant's having like a good leaf day, then that's probably my favorite plant. Do you know what I mean? If it's suffering from spider mites and it looks like shit, it's probably not my favorite plant at the minute because it looks ugly and it's dying and I have to try and emotionally detach from it. Like I would love to know in the comment section, basically how do, how does having a favorite plant work for you? Have you had this one plant for years and it's just your all time favorite? It doesn't really matter if it's having a bad day or it looks bad or it takes a punch or it dries out, like you still love it, it's still your baby. Or are you, you know, are you the kind of person a little bit more like me where if plants are starting to push out, you know, better leaves like my pink princess does that become your favorite plant for a while just because it's looking extra sexy do you chop and change like i'd be really curious in the comments to know what kind of you know favorite plant person you are because i really want to know if it's just me that's basically just ridiculously superficial with my plants i basically want to know if i'm a bad plant parent i think is what i'm getting at also i'm generally pretty curious to find out what your top five favorite house plants are at the minute so if you leave them in the comments, I would love to have a good read of them with a cup of tea because honestly, mine are pretty like philodendron and monstera heavy. So I just want to get a flavor of what everybody's favorite plants are. So please do leave them down below. Likewise, if you've got any other video suggestions, please leave them down below. And if you like this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to see any more of my content on this, on educational stuff, on red plant indexes, on plant tinder, on blogs, on anything, then please hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.